Hey guys, we've got some more Transformers toy news today. This time from the Australian Toy Fair this past weekend. There's some interesting reveals coming out of here. First up is a repaint and retool of Road Handler and Swindler. It's the Sports Car Patrol, Blackjack and Hyperdrive. These two actually feature new heads and chests to help differ them from the original Autobot versions of these molds. These two were G1 Micromasters, but they weren't originally remolds of G1 Road Handler and Swindler. But I think it's smart of them to remold them here. They're not that different. I think even what they've done already, remolding the heads and chests, is already more than I would have expected from Hasbro. Next up is a pair of new molds, High Jump and Powertrain, the Off-Road Patrol. Again, these guys were old school G1 Micromasters, but now I'm just wondering who they'll repaint and remold them into. And finally, the biggest reveal out of Toy Fair Australia, our first proper look at Siege Barricade. Confirmed. He is a repaint of Prowl, and he does come with a new head, but it's not his head. It's clearly Smokescreen's head, which we can only assume means we'll eventually get a Smokescreen repaint of this mold down the line, especially since the weapons that he comes with are Smokescreens as well. But it's a little disappointing that we finally get a G1 version of Movie Barricade, but he doesn't have his own head. I would have even preferred the original Prowl head over this. Now I should note that this Siege Barricade is actually inspired by a piece of fan art done by famed Transformers artist Guido Guidi. While I do have a differing opinion on how a G1 movie barricade should look, it is super cool that Hasbro used a fan's design for an official product. Although he and Hasbro are hardly strangers, as Guidi has worked on countless comics and even done his fair share of packaging art for the toys. Nonetheless, hey Hasbro, if you're ever looking to get a little extra mileage out of your Titans Return 6-shot mold, or any possible future 6-shot mold, I know of one fan repaint that would look really nice. That's pretty much it for Siege news. There were some new Siege figures on display, namely Jetfire and Omega Supreme, including a comparison shot of Siege Omega Supreme along with his G1 self and Omega Supreme. But we've also got a bit of Cyberus news, so let's check that out. Now these were at the US Toy Fair, but we didn't have very good pictures of them. And there's out of package pics of them too. It's Wave 1 of the Cyberverse Tiny Turbo Changers. These are very cute mini versions of some of the Cyberverse characters. Let's go down the line and give our thoughts on these. First is Prowl. He's a pretty decent looking little Prowl. It certainly helps that his color scheme is so simple that the lack of paint apps on these doesn't affect him too much. Unlike Hot Rod, who just looks like a mass of red plastic. Physically he looks fine, it's just too bad he seems to be almost entirely unpainted. Starscream, kind of like Prowl, benefits from his simple color scheme. He is missing his blue, and there are some places he could use some detailing, but he actually looks pretty good as is. Optimus Prime looks almost as bad as Hot Rod paint-wise, maybe a little worse mold-wise. He really could use a lot more paint apps. Even just some paint on his chest and the front of the cab would be a huge improvement. Now Grimlock, Grimlock, well, Grimlock looks pretty much perfect. Sure, he could use a little more paint here or there, but as is, he looks great. And he's super cute in Dino Mode. I love the look of him. This might be one I try to get just because of how freaking cute he is. This next one, again, what a surprise. It's Black Arachnia, like Beast Wars Season 1 and 2 Black Arachnia. We already know Cheetor is in the show, as well as animated Lockdown and Lugnut, and we know R.I.D. Skybite has at least two molds in Cyberverse, so he's probably in the show too. So it wouldn't be a shock, but it'll certainly be very welcome to see Black Arachnia show up in the Cyberverse cartoon. Now unfortunately, she really suffers from the lack of paint. She's basically all black except for the hourglass on her spider butt, her gold face, and her gold, for lack of a better term, panties. Although since this is Cyberverse Black Arachnia and not Beast Wars Black Arachnia, it's hard to tell exactly how much detailing she is missing. But if she's supposed to look anything like she is in Beast Wars, it's a lot. But still, I'll definitely be looking to pick this one up anyways, just as a Beast Wars fan. Next, we've got Drift. Okay, wait a minute. Wasn't the previous Drift figure we looked at called Deadlock? So is Hasbro just covering themselves and using both of his names? When we see Deadlock again in Cyberverse Season 2, will he be more like his Drift self and be going by that name? 
I guess we'll have to wait and see to find out. But yeah, as for his toy, he looks alright. Again, he benefits from having an almost entirely white color scheme. Much like Soundwave, who looks pretty much perfect paint-wise, because he's usually all blue anyways. But his arms do look off. Feels like they're mistransformed or not transformed all the way. But this could be how they are, unfortunately. Jetfire looks awesome. Again, his simple color scheme really helps him here. Maybe his backpack could have been painted or cast in all red, but I think he looks great. This will be another pickup for me. And of course, Bumblebee gets a tiny turbo changer too. And again, his color scheme works with the lack of paint in this line. Looks like he comes with his stinger too, which I honestly would have preferred him without it. I mean, are you really buying these to pose in the fight scene? No, they're supposed to just stand there and look cute. So why have his weapon deployed? Next is Megatron, who weirdly looks better in tank mode than his main figure we took a look at in a previous video. Even if his tank mode is basically just a grey box with a black cylinder on top. His robot mode looks good, except he's got these giant shoulder pads. Which look cool, but his cannon is actually mounted on his shoulder instead of his arm. So it looks a little odd. Oh, and he also has his mace weapon. Which again, I prefer these guys sans weapons, but it's cool they're homaging it. And finally, it's Shockwave. Like some of the others, his lack of paint apps does not hurt him at all. His eyes painted, even his thighs are painted, and it looks like he might have a little bit under his chest too. And unlike his mainline toy we looked at recently, he definitely has his spider tank mode. Overall, these tiny turbo changers look great. I'm definitely going to pick some of these up. Others I might even pick up just to paint and make them look like they should. I do wish there was a wind blade in here though. I'm really surprised she isn't since she was a big part of Season 1. Although that, combined with the fact that she hasn't received any new toys in any of these Toy Fair announcements, has me concerned of the fate of Windblade in Season 2. Also, I really would have liked to see a regular Seeker mold in here, just so that we could get a whole bunch of repaints as the various Seekers we've seen throughout the show. And of course, a Tiny Turbo's Cheetor would be awesome. Skybite, Lockdown, and Lugnut would be great and a generic Autobot mold would be good too. I can see some people troop building a bunch of them. Hopefully Hasbro is saving them for Wave 2. Well, let me know what you think of this latest toy news down in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you here next time. <laughs>